Well, as the economy reopens, demand is roaring back, but delays at the ports are slowing efforts to get the goods where they need to go. In March, only 40 percent of container ships arrived on time. That compares to about 70 percent of the pre in the previous two years. Joining us right now to talk about what this means for business and consumers is Gene Soroka. He's the executive director of the Port of Los Angeles. And Gene, thank you for getting up incredibly early for us. It's really good to see you this morning. Good morning, Becky. You too. Good to see you again. So what's causing this problem? We keep hearing about delays at the ports. Um, what's the issue? It's a pandemic-induced buying surge that we have never seen before. As we hit the beginning of our lockdown and COVID-19, we found that we would buy more as American consumers online. We would go to our big box retailers and home improvement stores like we haven't seen in the past. And that continues through today. So when did things really start stacking up? Is this a problem that began a year ago or is this something that's a little more recent? We saw cargo volume dip to about 50 percent of normal last March. And then during the summertime, we began to see imports really pick up where we've now been averaging more than 900,000 container units a month for about nine straight months. Cargo ships started backing up in November and we're sitting for a couple, maybe three days. And then we peaked out in February with 40 container vessels sitting outside of our breakwater at anchor. And the average time sitting was about eight days. So what's the solution? How long will this will this last? I mean, we, we may have seen things peak, but you're still talking about some pretty big problems. Um, you think this lasts the rest of this year or even beyond? Yeah, this is a broad east-west problem across the world. My friends in Hamburg, Singapore, and Dubai are all reporting similar activities. But, Becky, in the last eight weeks, we've improved now where we've dropped the anchored ships by two-thirds. The velocity of containers moving in and out of the port has improved by 20 percent. We still have work to do on the rail side, but we're gaining strong traction. Have there been any, any holdups with not being able to get workers uh, on the docks during during the pandemic, or is this purely just a, an incredible surge of, of ships coming in faster than you can unload them? More the latter, but our, our dock workers and our workforce on the ground here are so important to us. Like many coming out of the year-end holidays, we got hit with spikes with COVID, and we had probably 5 to 6 percent of our workforce either ill or isolating. That was quickly moved forward, and we began a mass vaccination program here at our International Cruise Center at the Port of Los Angeles. And these dock workers have been averaging five and a half to six days a week on the job. Incredible work since the pandemic began. We were just looking at that ratio of imports versus exports, 4.3 to 1, the ratio of imports versus exports. You know, how different is that from normal times and what kind of problems does that create? Normally, we'd be about two and a half to one, Becky, and it creates a lot of concern. The supply chain's been choppy for about three and a half years with the institution of the tariffs and the trade tensions that began in the spring of 2018. But what it impacts is the round trip economics for the service providers, liner shipping companies, railroads, truckers, et cetera. We're simply just not moving as many exports as we should. And we've talked about a national export strategy. The biggest thing here is that we have this concurrent impact of vessels three miles away. Once a ship is completed, the next ship comes in. And we have to recycle all of that equipment back, whether it's rail cars or truck power. So boosting our exports and balancing trade to an extent where we can cycle those round trip economics are extremely important to us. Why, why aren't we exporting more? Is it that we're not making things or that other countries don't want our products because they're too expensive now? Yeah, three things, and you've just hit on one of them. Even though the strength of the U.S. dollar is important in so many of our economic sectors, it impacts us on exports because versus competing nations, our goods are a little more expensive than those of others. Second, the lingering trade policies and the retaliatory tariffs in China have impacted our farmers, manufacturers broadly, and our auto sector on the exports. And lastly, is a more recent phenomenon where the liner shipping companies are evacuating empty containers as a priority versus exports to get ready for the next round of imports back to the U.S. 
Wow. So, Gene, what what would fix things if you could wave a magic wand and, and create a solution here? What would it be? A couple things in, that we're working on right now. We've implored our importers to pick up their cargo as quickly as possible. We need a little bit more room on our tarmacs to maneuver for the next vessels coming in. Picking up our productivity, working every hour of operations is important, including the night side where we're seeing free gate activity go unused. Second is really digitization. Information sharing that we've created with our port community system, the Port Optimizer, needs to be adopted by many more folks. And having a national information sharing system where cargo owners can see where containers and rail services are to match up with ships would be huge. And then aligning all that to deliver value to our customers is an ongoing effort. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.